All right. Um, good day, good afternoon, good evening. How are you all? I hope you're all fine. My name is Tishin Alfred Dambonderi from Zimbabwe. I'm a disability activist and epilepsy warrior and a mental health advocate in my own right. <laughs> so can you please drop in the chat box where you are, where you are and the type of epilepsy that you have? Well, I have mild partial epilepsy, meaning that I collapse and then I just go mute for a minute or so, then wake up. But then there are times when I do have seizures if I do have headaches. So can everyone hear me before I even continue? Yes, you're very audible. Can hear you. I'm very clear. Thank you. Yeah, we can hear so you. As I, dear. Saying, as I was saying, please drop in the chat box where you are located. As I said, I'm from Zimbabwe. I would like to know who are connected and where you're from and how it's been so far with your journey with epilepsy. Hello everyone, I'm uh, Rosalyn from Kenya. Um, uh, I, get, uh, uh, I get seizures maybe when at night, but that has not happened so far since January. Thank you. Oh, that's amazing, that's amazing. I love that, I love that. Seizure free for three months. Oh no, two months, oh my God. I'm already in March. <laughs> um, Ango Chuku, I see you, diagnosis 1992. May that you are eight. Ooh, I was like eight years late before the diagnosis. Oh, I'm young. I'm so young. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, some of you were still in school. I guess I, I too am uh, seizure-free. I'm hooked on drugs, so I have seizures if I don't have my meds. But otherwise, like I said, I've been having seizures since 1992. Mine was more of a complication to chemotherapy. Uh, it left a scar in my brain, which I'll have for the rest of my life. But I think what's important is having been able to overcome through life and being able to live life with the challenge that I had with the, that would come with seizures. So I think it's more or less to increase the awareness so that people know that it is possible to become seizure free or it is possible to live a normal life with the seizures. Thank you. Such a powerful message, such a powerful message. Wow, uh, I didn't even, I can't even, looking at you, I can't even think that you've been through chemo, wow. Or, I salute you. I like I, we have to salute you right now. We have to salute you. That is powerful. We salute you, sir. You are you no. Know, we can call you a warrior. You're a soldier. Thank you so much, sir. Anyone else who wants to introduce themselves to the meeting, tell us about themselves and their journey. Um, I'll I'll begin. I'm Simon. And I, and I get um, generalized seizures, but I haven't had any seizure for the past six months. I'm on drugs and as Chiku also said, um, I usually get seizures when I miss my meds or get really, really dehydrated. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that we are all aware about how we get our seizures and how to stop them. Because most of us, I've been talking to a lot of people who, who, are, who are living with epilepsy. They don't even know about that. You have to explain to them that you have to keep a diary where you write the time when the seizure happened, what was happening when the seizure happened, and what stopped, what time the seizures are, uh, like timing the seizure, and also just monitoring their health and what triggers them. 
most of us don't even know that but i'm so impressed that we all do and we've all learned and accepted this actually the first thing that we have to do is to accept that yes i'm a plug i'm one person who didn't accept it at first it took me a long time to then accept it you know social norms beliefs are religious and cultural beliefs you know that but when i then got to understand that there is a certain thing that i have to do for me to be seizure free that was like 2016 and now eight years nine years seizure free that's the most powerful thing that i can tell a person who's who's living with epilepsy right now that monitor it accept and start to monitor it so that you can be able to actually control it anyone else who wants to introduce themselves and talk about their experience and their life with epilepsy hello guys yes how are you Susan? hello guys how are you fine how are you i'm good how, how is your day going First of all, I would like to thank everyone who is participating in this program. And also, I would like to thank We can continue. Okay, so there is spaces on technical breaches. So we are going to continue. So, I hear somebody speaking in the background. Does anyone else want to talk? Hi, everyone. Can people hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Brad, how are you? Yes, we can hear I, um, you. I'm, I'm very well. I think somebody asked me, how am I? It feels really weird to respond to a greeting you didn't get. Um, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, M. Walia here uh, from Zambia. Um, wow, this, this is a hard one. I don't even know what to say right here. But uh, yes, I've been living with epilepsy since uh, 2016. Those who can do math can add how many years that has been up until this year yay um my my seizures still still happen and uh, i guess as i have heard from many people here i'm one of those who've just accepted the very fact that i have the condition it's funny i can actually say it to someone with a smile on my face trust me i get the questions how do you say that with a smile I'm like well the same way you can say i'm fine with a smile um yeah it's one of the the, the 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 few things that even i say to people accept that you have a condition and then all these stigmas will go away but yeah so right here get my seizures every once in a while i do realize as well that sometimes if i don't sleep enough i get a lot of seizures uh, being a programmer uh, does the opposite because there's very little sleep there yeah but uh hey right here So much right i am loving it and brian is one of our speakers today if you didn't know yes i do know that i'm dressed in purple i have the purple thing behind me my hair is all purple like you think i'm the one who's going to be presenting but anyway since i'm the main show i was like you know what i'm gonna take away from the people who actually took away my time to speak i love speaking everyone knows that i love hearing my voice but today i was like okay let me hear other people's voices 
that's me being i'm trying to be humble <laughs> anyway so let us begin with our presentations we were supposed to get a presentation from benny's face but i've seen that she's not yet logged in so bright can you please take it away and start with the presentation uh, 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 sorry sorry so, sorry can i speak tashinga yes yeah, uh, yes. Benice is locked in. Benice oh, is yes. locked in. Yeah, yeah. And uh, before, uh, another thing, uh, we have an activist in the room. Yeah, uh, You said, you know, uh, persons with epilepsy were introducing their, themselves. So we also have uh, Inacio, uh, who introduced himself as an activist. Sorry, oh, let me just... Oh. Yeah, he's a... He's a social activist and an epilepsy advocate from Mozambique. I think you can proceed. Oh, Ignacio, can you please introduce yourself and tell us, since you're not a person with epilepsy, why you became an epilepsy advocate? We just want to hear your story. It would be very nice to hear that. Afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Good afternoon. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. First, I would like to apologize because English is not my first language. Here we speak Portuguese. So please Neither is any one of us. Take for granted every mistake. <laughs> well, um, uh, here in Mozambique, uh, we witness things that happen to people with epilepsy, even public buses. And uh, we were very sensitive to that. That's why we organized, or we set an organization, which is Association Musambicana de Apoyo Psychological Epilepsy AMAPI. It is a support association for people with epilepsy in order to help them to enjoy their full rights here in Mozambique. And on the 14th, February, we were accepted in the national TV and fortunately, we managed to pass through our message and many people who didn't know what epilepsy was now are asking questions and they're getting, they getting aware of epilepsy. So we are doing our work here in Mozambique advocating for people with epilepsy to enjoy full rights. So whenever there is a meeting about epilepsy, I'm interested and in there. Thank you very much. That's, that's what I should say now. I am very much inspired and aspired by that. Just the fact that you took it as a civic duty to help people with epilepsy. It's amazing. Thank you so much for that, sir. Thank you so much. And also, I'm a teacher. So I do that work at school as well. Oh, okay. thank you so much for that. Like School has been the hardest part of my epilepsy journey because most teachers will not understand you. They'll think that all of a sudden you're trying to do something, you're trying to get away with, with like you're try, trying to make a disability, taking advantage of a disability, of which they didn't even know that it was a disability. And they, they would just call it, she's sick, she's sick, she's sick, and they didn't have a definition. So having teachers like you in schools who actually help those young ones who are going to, because it affects you mentally, psychologically, and emotionally. And having teachers like you who understand student is very powerful, quite powerful. Okay, so thank you so much for that. So I, I don't see you, um, Denise, can you please introduce yourself to the group and take it away? I give the floor to you now. Denise. Yeah, uh, Denise, can you can you unmute your mic? 
Uh, oh my. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. All right. Sorry. Yeah. So my name is Bunny Stevens. I am a mom of three. I raise awareness about epilepsy. I come from Kenya. And uh, maybe I could briefly share my story. So I was diagnosed with epilepsy in 2008. Um, that I was in high school. On this end, it's like form four. That's when you're beginning, when you're preparing to sit for your final exams in high school. And in the second term, that is when it struck. <laughs> I was, however, misdiagnosed for three years. They kept saying I have anxiety disorder, depression. So it was such a back and forth um, season. I remember, um, of course, the school administration really did not, they weren't really supportive, but the students were and some teachers. It's by God's grace that I actually did my final exams. I remember doing some of them in host, like on the in the school clinic. I, I would do some of them in bed because the seizures would keep on coming. But by God's grace, I actually managed to do my exams. I passed. I got um, a slot in the university, and it was while in the university that I think was it third year. That is around 2012. This is when now a proper diagnosis was done. When, I, when the EEG was done, that is when it was clear that there was a seizure uh, disorder and I had to begin um, anti-epileptic drugs. That was quite torturous, I may say, because I would take like 12 tablets a night and they, they would just knock me out. Wow. And... Um, I thank God for the friends and family that stood with me the whole time. At least I can say that um, I didn't feel the stigma as such when it was when it came to close family and friends. But of course, I would see the many questions because this just rose out of nowhere. But I'm really I'm grateful for the support through that period because I'm still young and all this has just, it has come out of nowhere. And I somehow have to adjust because adjusting meant that the things which came very obvious before were no longer obvious. I would not be allowed to be in the kitchen alone. I wouldn't um, be going to different places alone. There was just a lot of adjustment to do. But um, once the medication, once I got used to the medication, the seizures actually were, were stabilized. And if to point out, I mostly used to get absence seizures. And um, I don't know, how, I've forgotten the name, but sometimes I would, I would jack, though there wasn't foaming or, or sounds. It was most, sometimes, most times people didn't know what is really going on with me. The absence seizures were the ones which were very, very common. Yeah, I still went through campus and it's in campus that I would, I, I love modeling. Um, that was something I really pursued as well. No matter the seizures, I would still be on stage. Um, sometimes the seizures would happen backstage, but it was very minimal. Yeah, so do you, I, I was, I remember being crowned Miss University of Nairobi. And that is when now, um, along that time, I was, I, was, uh, I was invited to become ambassador National Epilepsy Coordination Committee in Kenya. And that is when I started spreading the word out, or rather I became now actively involved in raising awareness about epilepsy. Because at some point I thought, this is a strange disease that has just happened. I have no clue what it's all about. I thought maybe I was the only one with it, only for me to get to interact with other youth who had it. And I can say that began my journey of acceptance. I felt I wasn't alone. And yeah, it's, it, it became easier 
um, the more I talked about it, the more I was able to overcome and feel I'm okay. I can still achieve my dreams despite epilepsy. Yeah, so I still got to graduate, do two other courses. Um, I did a degree in food nutrition and dietetics and um, went ahead to do project management, monitoring and evaluation. And around, when was it? So 2014 is when I noticed now there was a very big change. So just to cut the long story short, I haven't been on medication since 2014. And of course, we had to discuss this with the, the neurologist who I used to see. And he's like, well, I can allow you not to take medication, but I need you to be very careful and keen um, to just observe if there is any relapse. So for I can say the condition was there for a whole five years. And then I believe I miraculously got healed because I haven't been on medication ever since. Um, and I, I, I do really thank God for that. And I know it can also happen to, to, other, to other people as well. He's still able, but I would say the main thing is once you have accepted, it no longer becomes a limitation. You, you just eat as yes, this condition is there, but I, it doesn't have to, to determine who I become or what I can achieve in life. I can, one can still do so much with their lives. And I remember one of my worries used to be, will I get married? Will I get children? How will career be like? But there continue pursuing the things that you love so long as you're keen on what are your triggers what are you taking your medication as as advised Well, uh, it seems that uh, Benice is having issues with uh, internet. I don't know. Um, can Brian? Can Bright come in? Bright. Uh, hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. All right. Benice uh, is still unable to meet us. I think so. Tashinga, since okay. you're the host, can we check? Yeah, I think we just confirm so that uh, we, we, we ensure that she's able to give us story in full. Yeah, uh, Bright, you can start. All righty then, uh, let's uh, bring some smiles to this place. Um, yeah. My name is Bright. Greetings to everyone again. Um, I'm speaking here from Zambia. I am uh, an epilepsy advocate. Uh, sorry uh, for the video, by the way. Um, I was caught in a bit of a, a, a jingle of uh, works and the computer I'm using right now has a bit of some messed up. Uh, camera. I wish I was using my phone, but that would be more 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 problems. So yeah, uh, those who want to see my face, please you see it on Facebook. <laughs> but so um, my name is Bright. I'm uh, I'm an adv uh, an advocate epilepsy, and I've chosen to extend further to uh, mental health 
as well, and um, an innovator as well. Um, innovator mostly in tech, a tech innovator. Uh, I was diagnosed with epilepsy in 2016 March uh, while I was in university. It was rather uh, an interesting journey. You know, this epilepsy was just something I heard about from many people. I didn't know what it was. I just saw it uh, in a colleague who I had in high school. Uh, he would fall every once in a while and would, you know, not even give it the light of day thinking, eh, whatever. And then here I was in school, falling to the ground and not knowing exactly what was going on, only waking up to people asking me, are you okay? And it was quite a strange thing until one of my friends saw it happen to me and I was waking up to an exorcism where people are busy screaming their outs and outs and get out and leave him and leave him. Uh, I think those who are, who are Pentecostals are quite familiar with exorcisms. And I, I got even more curious and my friend told me, go to the hospital. And so I went to the hospital and the doctor there didn't help much. As I was struggling to explain what I had, the doctor just said, oh, so that's what you meant. And they gave me medicine. That, however, uh, rose the curious me to life. And I thought, if the doctor won't tell me, then I'll find out what it is myself. Wow. And um, um, oh, I thought somebody was asking something. Yeah, and so I, I, I began uh, digging into this thing but since i had no words to even describe it i decided to record myself in that moment when i was about to have a seizure i got an aura and i knew i was going to have a seizure and so i just put my pc just a distance away and recorded what was going on and once the seizure was done i decided to you know watch it and find videos now on youtube that looked similar to what i was having just describing it in the search box and I discovered I was having simple seizures and I thought, well, if I know such little information about it and the doctor won't tell me, let me switch my focus to just focus on this and know what it is. But since I was in school and I needed to do my final year dissertation, that is my project. And, you know, this research was going to eat, eat up my time. I decided to switch my final year dissertation for my degree at the Copa Belch University to become one that is focusing on epilepsy. And that is the moment I decided to build uh, the mobile application I call Seizure Assistant. Now, I decided to build it solely to focus on providing help for a person who's suffering from a seizure in the moment they're having a seizure. And um, yeah, the work started and uh, I think I, I have a PowerPoint of it here and I'll be able to explain more on what that seizure assistant thing is just right here. Uh, let me just share the screen here. You guys will be able to tell me if you are able to see my screen from your end. Uh, uh, oh, this was disabled by the host anyway. So seizure assistant was uh, uh, created and I decided to make an application that would be able to allow me to teach the people around me how to take care of me when I'm having a seizure. I know I like saying it that way because it's fancy, but it's basically an application that allows a person who's about to suffer a seizure to call for help in that moment when they're having a seizure, either automatically or manually. Manually by just pushing a button, automatically by allowing a device worn either on the wrist or something that I'm working on, a neuro detector using neuro detectors that automatically detects that you're about to have a seizure and then it goes into the panic state. And then the application will call for help, send an SMS to your loved one telling them, hey, Bright has suffered a seizure and it gives them your location. And the people around you will just see you on the floor and they'll be seeing what's happening here while your phone is making noise there. They go to your phone, pick it up and they'll find your details there. This is bright i'll use me this is bright uh this is uh what he has what he's having is a seizure right now how you can help him do a b c d e f g and all the instructions are there first aid instructions laid out on the screen simply and there'll be a small contact card there for my emergency contact just telling them this is his emergency contact if you want to talk to him here uh 
Somebody saying something? Um, okay, so this was enabled. Okay. Um, so this uh, is the screen I wanted us to have a look at and uh, we can, uh, uh yeah we can look at this so this is seizure assistant the mobile application we've heard about all of this the story and all of that i identified problem the problems identified during my uh study of this you know it's a medical condition affecting very a lot of people but very little was known about it you know there was poor condition management due to lack of certified information for case management a struggle for patients to manage their medicine and inventory and take reminders to prevent skipping or running out of their medicine all this i noticed after i had a small seminar at the university where i was talking to people about my condition and it shocked me how many people stood up saying they have the condition and i was saying wait all of you have this and you've all been quiet you know <laughs> so i decided to even then build the solution here, seizure assistant, you know, a mobile application that is meant to do exactly as I said, uh, you know, helping improve uh, the, the, the quality of health, obviously, and all of that, a source of SOS medicine. I'm trying to work with Raw Foundation for this, where they can help with medicine and the person can acquire that medication via the application. Say you run out of medicine and you want to find medicine easily, click a button and Raw Foundation will be able to give you that medication. And this is what the application looks like. It's uh, the three screens here that I shared. There's the home screen there with the many features. This main menu has been changed. I'm just showing you this because it's the only one I have access to today. Uh, although it's changed, I've redesigned it. And then there's the community feeds where people can chat communicate if you're having any issues that you want to communicate with other friends put them there if you want to be known leave your names and details there if you want to share it anonymously share anonymously and nobody will ever know you're the one who's struggling with this problem but the goal is you've been assisted by people on the platform and obviously the last screen that you're looking at the last two screens you're looking at there are the panic screens those are the ones that you see in that moment where you're about to uh where the, the application goes into the panic states so the contact card is listed there and the instructions are listed there so that is the seizure assistant application an application that is done right now i'm just working on the auto device to actually have it out there and downloadable and from all of this what i would like to share with everyone is i have managed to harness what came as a problem this uh, unfortunate thing that came and harness the, the dark energy that it brought and you know fuel, you, you use it as a fire to fuel this cause that has helped many through my advocacy works i've been able to speak to a number of people and a number of people are saying okay great you've helped me most people i don't even know they read what i write but i'm just receiving uh you know write-ups from people saying i follow what you write on facebook bright m Walia. For those who are on Facebook, most people come and say, I follow what you write and you've really, really helped me. I've been living with this condition. I didn't know I could uh, equally uh, manage uh, this and uh, manage this and be able to overcome this problem. And so it's that that I could use as a word of encouragement to all of us. It might seem like it's a heavy load, but we can use it to share our experience to help the many other people that may be looking up to me to, or to us. The one message that I carry and use very much is, you may have a thorn in your flesh, but his grace will be sufficient for you to be able to sustain it. You might be the one who needs to suffer that so others don't. Yeah. So that is my long but... Uh, short interesting story there's a whole lot more but uh, i still do a lot of write-ups on facebook to just encourage people and share my experiences with others and uh, if anyone is interested you can meet me there facebook bright and Walia. thank you i'll end there with my long short story
Wow. Um, can we please give a round of applause to Bright? That was such a powerful, powerful presentation. And it was so accurate and so interesting and so entertaining, yet very informative. Mm -hmm. That is so amazing. That is amazing. That is amazing. I, 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 you know, like when you're getting to hear your story, I can like, I, I, I hear you in, like, I hear myself in you, like everything that you say you went through, I went through myself. That's like, that's the most thing, like first when I got into epilepsy advocacy, most people have, I, don't understand what advocacy and acti activism is. Is someone talking? Can we please mute ourselves? Okay, so when we got, when I put, uh, the first person where I knew when I started this epilepsy story was Samo, and it was written epilepsy story, and then I was like, okay, there's actually that thing. Okay, so what is activism? Activism is when you make people listen, but when we say an advocate, an advocate is when you identify the solutions and work towards and inviting parties that can actually help them, help you and other, everyone solve those problems, which is very powerful. You see, and then people will tell me that epilepsy and mental health don't go alone, but they do. I suffered from severe depression for many years and I didn't even know that I was fi fighting, I was fighting severe depression. So when I saw on the application where you were saying, our on your seizure assistant, where they say speak to your counselor, that is very, very important because we do need these mental health support groups for persons with epilepsy. For those who don't know me, I'm a mental health counselor myself. And of late, I've been counseling persons with disability and persons with epilepsy because I understand how it feels to be in that, that, that dark hole. And for you to get out and then be able to speak your story like I'm doing right now, it means that there is a reason why you have to do it. I once tried to commit suicide once, but it didn't work. God did another part for me. So thank you so much, Bright, for that for that application. For those who have questions, please you're free to ask Bright right now. I saw in the comment section where they were uh Nashua said, is this free? Is it available for from for everyone? Right, please answer that for us. Yeah, so the application is indeed meant to be just that, freely accessible. You are not going to be paying a coin to use the platform. Only other services that are going to need something, if we have maybe counselors who are going to say, pay me for this, pay me for that, maybe. But to use the platform, yes, indeed, it's going to be free at least for the, for the longest time until we start generating some money to get the application to run you know because obviously it's an application that's going to need some uh some some cost obviously but for the start no you won't need to pay a ngwe okay thank you so much any other questions I think my advice, my advice to to Bright also is to to let the product not to get a copyright for other people because sometimes people may copy your license and then if they have power and money they can do the same thing and it's also good for the Alliance of Africa while we know that that product belongs to Bright it's better to buy from Bright yeah and integrate it to the national the national calendars of four countries. So when you send a proposal, you send through his application form app rather than taking other apps. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you so wow. much, Chantel. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And uh, the, the copywriting is actually en route we have managed to acquire funding to actually fi you know, finalize all the registration, copywriting, and all of the branding for the, for the application. 
So yes, that has been considered. Thank you. And the proposal to uh, you know work with the alliance, brilliant. I support it. Thank you so much. Thank you. I especially like the part where you have included the first aid part. Most people do not know how to react to a seizure. And that is actually something that I have thought like as Epilepsy Alliance Africa, we should have a first aid campaign for raising awareness of how when a person has a seizure, you should actually treat them. Because you find people put spoons in your mouth, they try to hold your head. Actually, they don't hold your head. They try to hold down your body. By the time that you, you are out of the seizure, up, you are aching every muscle in you is aching, which could have been avoided had people just known how to deal with the situation at hand. So thank you for so much for, for that. Anyone else? Actually, just to come in there with all those uh, things that are there, there's a new feature that was recently added. It's called Buster Myth. And uh, just to make it all fancy and whatever, there's a balloon with each myth that is there. So you go to the application, click on a myth, it will give you the truth about it. So you find a myth like when a person is having a seizure, put a spoon in their mouth. There's a balloon next to it. Click on it and boof, the truth is revealed to you. We just, you know, there's a whole fun way of busting myths on seizure assistant now. And more myths are being added to it. And when it's availed, we shall be able to see all of those. That's, that's actually amazing. But I think, uh, I don't know if you all agree with me, every country should actually put in uh, a myth that comes in. Because I understand that we all have different myths in our countries. And True. if that feature is added, it will actually help a lot of people. As you say it yourself, I've been meeting also a lot of persons with epilepsy. Yes, they will just be saying, oh, my uncle did this to me. My whatnot did this to me. But as soon as they start learning about what really goes on neurologically, I think that will actually help. And those myths can actually help us be better people and actually advocate and make the campaign better and the movement better. All right, I see Ben. So, Rosine, please do you speak. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity and I want to be such an amazing job. And also, I believe that Perhaps uh, we can share how we can get this uh, assistant to different parts of our country in Africa. And then we can hear you. What are the measures that need to be taken? The measures that need to be taken in order for somebody to get the application? Yes, the, the, the senior assistant. Okay, so uh, don't worry, it's not as complex as imagined. The application is going to be available on the Play Store as well as in a group such as the one that we have on uh, WhatsApp. The APK will be shared once all the legalities are done here in Zambia. Dealing with government has not been exactly one of the easiest. Uh, you have to really, really stand in queues to just hear a no. So they're, they're talking about, no, you have to get legalization to publish medical information and all of that. And so I'm still running around trying to ensure all is done according to the law before we can have the application ready for download on the platform. I have it myself installed on my phone, <laughs> but I can't just make it public yet. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, thank you so much for that. So I see Benice is back and 
she was one of the first presenters that we were having. Finish, please take the floor. The time is yours. Denise. Uh, Tashinga. Hello. I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, since Simon is here, he can present while we wait for Benice. Okay. Yeah. Simon. Yeah, I'm here. Um. Good, e good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Simon, Simon Casego. I'm from Malawi and I work with Epilepsy Warriors Foundation. Um, I was diagnosed with epilepsy in 2018 and uh, by that time I was in my second year uh, at university. And um, honestly, didn't honestly, I didn't take it well. Um, um, the case is PPT, first point of mine. You know, conversion and, and my parents would, would just say, uh -huh. I think it was just, it was just something which, which happened due to some abnormalities in I the body, so spread convulsions, convulsions. Uh -huh. And then, this word, this word was a bit new to me, convulsion, convulsion. So I had, I had to search. What, what does this word mean? It led me to epilepsy, which I did, which I did. Um, to read about it, but I could tell me because when a seizure happens, um, well, most of the time yeah. you Myopic, actually don't yeah. know what's happening around you, so you actually hear from people what happened because usually when, yeah. I, when I gain conscious when I gain back my consciousness I would find bruises sometimes I would um, end up uh, biting my uh, biting my tongue see I find bruises over my body and then uh, my brother sometimes my cousin would explain um, I was what what would happen and this was truly devastating for for me, especially since since I was in. It was somehow I just come out to the group um to let them know what what happened to me. It started when I was on my holidays, but then when I went back to school, um, it happened this it happened this one time. I was around my friends, and then the next thing, I just woke up on my toes. I'd had a seizure. So we, we that we went out of the hospitals, and the hospitals would uh, in killers mostly in killers until. Um, should be the fourth time, if not the fifth time, um, they prescribed anti-epileptic drugs to me. So the doctor was quite sincere when telling me about all this. He told me I would have to be taking these drugs every day. So me, I thought this is, I thought this is a very a huge burden for me to be having drugs almost every day. So. Some of my some of my family members uh, would tell my mom that uh, this, this is not normal. I mean, the boy has grew up 
without any problem and reach this stage and then all of a sudden this just happens i bet these are some evil spirits they're trying to what they're trying to attack this boy so everyone had his opinion towards the condition until um we were all influenced that uh it was something uh, it was something spir something spiritual and then we had to visit a traditional doctor uh, he gave us he gave us some medicine which i should be taking he said after after i finish after i finish those type of medications i'd be completely cured so for for me i was already not happy with taking the drugs almost every day and this like uh was this was like a breakthrough for me so yeah i managed to finish the drugs without no problem but then after i i had stopped taking the antiepileptic drugs and uh after a few weeks a seizure had also happened and this this left me I, this left me traumatized additional leader has done his works and there's nothing which will happen to me again so the last time it happened it really really hit me so hard i had to start thinking of hospital and the doctors actually give the factors which trigger so miss medication was one to think about everything in line which had been happening, I should be taking the drugs because every time I had a seizure, my memory, my memory would be a bit had like what had happened last time. So with school, so fortunately, I managed to graduate, and um, after after a few interventions, I ended up. Uh, meeting Sam from if the works we I I began with Sam, I can say it's completely changed my mindset. It's completely changed my mindset. Of course, by the time I was meeting, I was meeting Sam. I would, I had already put it in myself that I need to do something about these. I need to do something about these seizures because it was really. It was really devastating for me. So I can say um, my, my interventions with Epilepsy Warriors Foundation has exposed me quite to a lot, not only about epilepsy, but to also other disabilities for people who face misinformation, people who end up not getting the required treatment. It's put me in a position where I would I would really love if people with disabilities receive the correct and right treatment because I have, I have, I have faced some sort of stigma, it's especially when I was at school. I mean, you might see, you might, you might see him looking. To believe it's something to do with what? Something to do with. He hit me inside the heart, but I kept on moving forward. With the, with the power of voices which we have united, I believe we can reach out to many people who, who have false information about, especially uh, factors, things to do with epilepsy. There's a lot of misinformation, so. My um, this is my story, yeah. Hello. Thank you so much, Simon, for that. Thank you so much. Do any of you have a question for Simon? Yeah. Yes, go ahead.
Anyone with a question for Simon? Please ask him right now. Can I speak? Yeah. I think the, the experience, the experience of some, uh, of some is the same as all of us because before even get diagnostic with epilepsy, many of our cultures in Africa seem to accept epilepsy like a witchcraft. And I think the question we need to raise on Indaba because Indaba is like a meeting of the youth generally in Africa. We need to 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 limit it those witch, witchcraft doctors or priests to take advantage of the weakness of the patient. And I think True. if if we raise our voice, that may be stopped in many countries. Thank you very much. Yeah, exactly. We need to raise that sort of voice because most people would stop uh, using drugs from the hospital and go for the traditional healers because they, for a fact, are very convincing and have their ways which they get into the mind of a person. And the person ends up stopping the drugs from the hospitals, which trigger, which put them at high risk of having a seizure. Yeah, that is an example of another young boy I found in Rwanda. And uh, they keep sending her to the witchcraft and that bring her to a completely wrong side where he forgets everything and now is, is, he has a disability permanent due to that. Thank you. That's very true, Chantal. That is so true. Um, I feel as if, as Africa, as the EAA, we need to actually have that kind of campaign, that kind of campaign where we are actually telling people about, the, about our stories and making sure that they reach the right kind of people who do campaigns in schools and hospitals, epilepsy in the workplace. You know, there are a lot of people who are telling me this day that I cannot go to work because of my seizures. And that is so sad that you can do something because of seizures, yet there's actually supposed to be a disability policy within the work frame of the workplace. So we actually need to actually um, find the areas that we're supposed to work together and have a campaign that will be continental, use the social media handles to do what is needed, the work that is needed. Since we are now living in a virtual world, let's use those platforms. And to those who are in the countries that can actually have physical, uh, campaigns, we work on them. I love the, the present that we get. I see different organizations posting in the EA group, and it's so powerful to see that, but it would be very more powerful if we all as Africa could actually join together in that concept note and work towards those campaigns in each and every country. Thank you so much, Simon, for that. That is a very powerful story and it's very inspirational. I won't lie because it shows that you're not alone and you're strong enough to go through what you went through. And I love the confidence that you say that you went to a witch doctor. Most of us don't even want to mention that because we are so afraid of the, how, how the religion will slash us back. But that's the truth. Most of us did go through a lot of things trying to I remember one time I went to so many different people I did not even know who to now trust or who to believe now because so many things were being said. And because you were so hopeless, you ended up believing everyone and hoping that, you know, like when you're so hopeless, everything that happens, you take it as a sign and you will say, okay, this is now my place, this is now my place, this is my place. You end up being so tired and hopeless at the end of the day in that hopefulness. So thank you so much, Simon, for your story. And I hope that story becomes an inspiration, aspiration for generations to come and for other people to come. So right now, I see Benice has dropped again. Benice, can you hear us now? Wonderful. Thank you. 
So we're going to give you the floor now. You can continue off with your story. Denise? Denise? Sorry, sorry about that. Um, I think there was an internet failure. Um, sorry about that. But um, I think I was almost done. So I was just um, saying that mine mostly is to create awareness about epilepsy. And I'm very concerned about psychosocial support because I know that with with uh, epilepsy, some people also now end up falling into depression due to the stigma. And you're also trying to understand really what is going on with you. It's like, this was not your, this is not what you expected out of your life. You, it, it sort of destabilizes you, but in essence, once you have accepted, you're able to just get on your feet and pursue um, what you love. So I have a foundation called Hatua Africa Foundation. I'll be resuming a number of activities. And yeah, mine is to, I, I desire to see people living with epilepsy achieving great, great milestones in this life. Um, I'm excited about what you're doing, right? That is such an encouragement to so many others. And I believe also this will show even caregivers that they really don't have to hide their children. They, they don't have to look at them like they have failed or they can't do much. In essence, there is so much in them that needs to be tapped into and to be a blessing even in society. So as we continue raising awareness, I believe we will reach out even to the children who are hidden in deep, deep, villages and no one even knows about them so i'm grateful to be in this um in i'm grateful to be in this forum today quite excited to hear all the all the conversations yeah so let's keep on working together god bless you uh, thank you for that uh Wonderful presentation, Benis. Uh, I don't know if, uh, do we have any questions for Benis? No. Do we have any questions for Benis? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, Okay, I think it seems like uh, it seems that we don't have any questions. Uh, I don't know, uh, Mr. Ngombe, your mic was unmuted. Were you about to speak? Then it disconnected. Um, if I may, I, I have a comment. Um, I, I'm not what you can call a youth, but I have lived with epilepsy for a very long period of time. I was epileptic from the age of eight and a half, and I had to battle epilepsy and cancer, leukemia to be specific, at the same time for a period of three years, and then after that, post uh, cancer, stuff like that. So I really wanted to, if possible, um, work with youth that are with EAA because in, in Africa, our problems are the same, our cultures are more or less the same, and at the same time, we find that our challenges are normally the same. And I feel that if we as EAA youth could gang up together and fight for ourselves because most African countries, you have that the youth will compose of over 70% or more in some cases. 
So if the youth are not active in advocating for the issues of epilepsy, then the whole of Africa is lost. So for the few years that I have, I don't know how many God will give me. I really am passionate in working with the youth in anything and everything, and uh, epilepsy is one of them. I am not a doctor, and I've, I've just gained my experience from living with it. So everything I do comes from the perspective of living with it. And uh, to a certain level, I feel that is something that needs to be shared to Africa and the world, because experience is something that is very powerful. And I always like to say that you don't have to go through it to know it. So if I could be that person who could help a couple of million to know about epilepsy and what to do, and then if the youth can gang up together as Africa, we could help others get there before they go through it. So I really see, I really love to see what we can do as a group. I believe this is a first and I hope it's not the last. And um, basically that's what I want to share. I think Tashinga said it before where our activities should not be individualistic. This country is doing this, this country is doing this. Now the question is, what are we as Africa doing? What are we as EAA doing to ensure that the challenges that we face in fighting epilepsy are actually met? Uh, I love to speak a lot and hear my voice too. So I think, let me stop there before I take the show. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I know the only one who loves the sound of their own voice. Yeah, it's just powerful to just hear yourself speak. Let me tell you something, guys. I have always been that person that has been always vibrant. If I enter into a room, you will know that confidence has entered. Because I believe if I am confident, everyone else who has a disability or who has epilepsy will follow me behind. Will be like, you know what? Because Tash can speak, let me do the same. And as Amgo Chukwu did say, it's very powerful to hear you speak like that and present and stuff like that. And you'll all be like, okay, if I can present myself that way, I know people will listen. And he's so he's telling the truth that we as the youth, we are the future. We don't have to, we have to have intergenerational relationship within the organization, within the movement, because we can all teach and learn from each other. And if we can teach and learn each other, we know that for the next future, if we're we are going to make decisions that we all can live with and we all can leave behind. So let's join voices, guys. That's one of the most powerful things that I want the organization that I wish as the youth of EAA we could do to join forces together. Yes, right, do speak. Right, you can speak. I see you're raising your hand. Uh, Tashinga Bright is saying he can't unmute. Okay, Bright, you can type your message and we'll read it out since he cannot unmute. So I am going to take this time for us to share what we think are the way forward from what we, the stories that we have had, the stories that we know, if you have a specific story that you have with specific problem, uh, which relates to epilepsy, please do talk about it right now so that we can come up with a way forward together. I have seen a message from Ignacio that he was 
Let me find the message. Where he's talking about how he's fighting. And I should say that I'm fighting with two families who have sons who experience seizures at school. Yet they don't want to take their sons to school. What do we do about what do we do about it? Yes, I'm what you you can speak. Hello, can I come in? Yes, Ashinda, go ahead. can I come in? Go ahead. Go Thank ahead. You. Thank you. Uh, actually, it was this week that I had that experience at school. Uh, I've started working in a new school last year, last year. And when I arrived there, I introduced myself and I talked about the, the organization we have, which, uh, which uh, champions uh, epilepsy in Mozambique. And it's the, the only one we have in this area here in Mozambique. And I talked a bit with the, my director, my principal, and or the school principal and the pedagogy. I asked it for a place, uh, I asked it for a chance for me to start uh, campaigning at school, start talking to teachers, start talking to students. And they couldn't organize a meeting because of COVID-19, but they allowed me to talk to students whenever I can and to talk to teachers whenever I could. And this week, I mean last week, uh, one of, of the students experienced seizures in the classroom. So the student didn't know what to do. I was in the teacher's room. So one student came running, rushing and asking for help. So no one was available, I went there. When people saw me going there, they also came there. And I tried to help that person and I helped the student. I controlled the time, he had Caesar for almost four minutes. It was four minutes, Caesar. After that, uh, he recovered. I talked to him and then I asked the phone number of one of his family members. Fortunately, he gave me the phone number of his mother. I called her, she came to school. When she came, I asked it if it was the first experience or the kid had seizures often. She said, no, this was the first experience. I said, all right, as we are close to a health center here, could you please pass it through health center? And there you'll find it there, a technician who is a mental health technician or talk to that person, explain this, and give me a feedback. I can't do anything, just take And then after the classes, I called her, I said, oh, I didn't take to hospital because I called my, my daughter and she said, just give him tea and take him home. All right. So how will you know that this is not epilepsy? And if you had problems, if it's epilepsy, it could help you to meet a neurologist to help this kid. That, no, we don't need that because we know this is not epilepsy. I said, you can't make sure that this is not epilepsy unless you take the kid you take the child to school, to, to the hospital. Ah, she's reluctant. She doesn't want to take the child to the hospital. And I'm trying to use diplomacy. I will try to talk to, to, the, to the school and see how they can approach this. Because that kid will experience another seizures and she will, the kid will scare other kids at school. So that was an advantage for me because I had chance to talk to others who were there present who experienced that the season. And another one was this week on, on Tuesday, this week, we were there singing the national anthem and all of a sudden 
we saw that he was going to fall. So I and one of my colleagues, we ran there and we held him and we helped him and we took him to a safer place where he could just relax. He stayed there for some time, he recovered. That took about one minute and half. After that, I spoke to him, said, uh, I have this now and then. I said, really? Yes. What about your parents? They know. Okay, fine. So can I have the contact? He gave me the contact. I called the mother, did not pick up. I called his father, did not pick up. And after some minutes, I was teaching. Then I received a call. It was his father. I explained the situation. And he said, said, okay, I'm coming to school. I said, all right, when you come to school, please talk to me. So when he came to school, he didn't talk to me, just, take the, just took the kid and went home. I tried to call him, he didn't pick, but I will, I will insist. So this is happening because even parents don't understand what epilepsy is. And our association now is campaigning, is doing awareness campaign in the national TV. And we are thinking of um, getting in touch with the mobile network providers because now and then they send SMS to people's mobile phone and they want to find ways of them sending message about epilepsy to everyone so that we may raise awareness because awareness in Mozambique is a big problem, a really big problem, and it's a big fight. So maybe that story will help us to give, uh, to give some insights, some ideas on what we can do to solve the problems of parents who don't accept that their kids may suffer from, the, from epilepsy and take them to hospital. And also there are people who stigmatize because hey, epilepsy, they find it something scary. They think it's contagious. I even talked to a teacher who said that I grew up and now I'm, I'm, a, I'm about 40 something. What I knew is epilepsy is contagious. I said, no, it's not contagious. I said, you know, many people don't know that. I said, that's why we exist. We are here to try to raise awareness. And you are the one, you are, you are what? Sorry, you are now one of the person who knows that epilepsy doesn't, uh, is not contagious and now you have the task to tell others who don't know about that. So that's the story that uh, Tashinda wanted me to share here. Thank you. Sorry for my English again. No problem. It's not what you do, you can see I wanted to tackle that, um, we could call it a case study per se. Uh, having gone through the education system from grade four all the way to university with epilepsy, I, I kind of like have a bit of experience and know why certain things happen in a certain way. Uh, what I've seen is the answer to every challenge you have with the condition of epilepsy is awareness. But now looking at both sides, with what people know, it is the last thing you want to hear that my child is epileptic. That's the last thing you want to know. So a lot of people will protect themselves by denying it, but they can't do that for long. So what I've seen work is continual awareness. Now, the problem that we have many a time is Awareness must be done as if you're talking to a two-year-old child, because a lot of times you get awareness that is too bombastic, that even I don't understand. I'm like, okay, I'm epileptic, but I don't know what you're telling me. So probably to help you with the, con with the case in uh, Mozambique is, um, continue doing what you're doing. Don't push too hard, but don't, don't allow not to push either. Uh, secondly, if you can start working out some awareness in bits, small little bits of awareness could help. 
try to work on the myths first because they could be saying, I don't want to hear my child is epileptic because to me, it's witchcraft. So it's not that they don't want to accept the child, but the barrier is the myth. Now, as you take out the myths, then acceptance can come. It's a good thing that you've already talked to the administration at the school because that's what my parents had to do. They had to talk to administration. Not everybody was going on, not everybody accepted it, but it made it better that the few that knew would be able to understand what I'm going through and know what to do. So I think uh, in, in this context of the case study, that's what I thought would be really good to do. Continue the uh, interaction with the parents. Um, if you can, it would be also good to have someone who's gone through it to have a talk with the parents. Not a long talk, but just to say, you know what? What your child is going through, I have, and look where I am. And uh, maybe that's where you can come. If you can't find anyone, then we are all over the world. You can use us as examples to say, uh, there's Bright, he's, he's done an application, has gone through college with epilepsy. There is myself. I started having seizures at eight. I've gone through university. I've gone through college. I've got an NGO. I'm boarding another one. So just to show that is also a way of breaking down the barriers. So I think what, what I'm trying to say in a nutshell is break down the barriers one at a time. You can't do it all at once, but one at a time, break down the barriers and you will be able to get these parents to have the children get the right treatment, to have the children continue with school and then to allow them to live a somewhat normal life. I can go on and on, but let me stop there for others to speak. Thank you so much, Ango Chuku. I myself okay. want to also add on to that. In as much as we talk to the parents, we also need to talk to the child. They need to also understand their condition because if for my family to then understand that this is what is going on with me, I had to be the first one who starts to explain. If the person who's the patient is the one who starts to explain it to the other people, they will see how serious it is. They will understand that, okay, he now understands it or she now understands what's making us feel to understand it. As I was saying, the social barriers, the cultural barriers, the religious barriers, that is the stuff that is stopping us from having this movement move a lot. But if, as Angu people said, past experience, the lived experience is very powerful. And showing them somebody who's very, who has excelled through and throughout with the condition will make them realize it, it won't, it's not like a day old journey, but as time goes on, they will eventually get to know that, okay, this disability exists and my child has it. And it, it being an invisible disability, they can scale in life. Anyone else who wants to add on something? Uh, there's a question in the chat. I think we can address that. That should be a quick one. Okay, so Belize says that how are you dealing with high cost of AEDs in your country? Any suggestions on how to ensure that the medication is affordable for the patient? So since my mic is on, I'll talk about Malawi. Malawi, we're blessed to have a system where medication is free. Uh, but with everything free, the challenge now comes to be availability. So one way is advocating through government. Uh, so I think it, it varies with every country depending on how the system works. But definitely when you advocate, a few things move. And then having the disability bill where epilepsy is embedded in also helps because that's you need to have legal documents to back what you're doing. So the challenge in advocating without a document is where you're spitting out fire, but you're looking at matchsticks. But when you have a document that is now legal, 
you are now able to use that against themselves because they are the ones who pass it. And then you are referring to that. Now, you, when you advocate, you're not speaking out much anymore. You're now using paraffin and, you know, it's a stronger flame. So that's what I can advise in terms of EADs. I have a document, but at the same time, keep advocating. Doesn't mean you should stop, but make sure that you have an, a document. If you do have a law, then please continue. It takes time. Malawi took seven years to pass the bill, but we're there. Now it's about implementation. So I think that's how I can answer the question. I don't know if there's more to share. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, in Zimbabwe, I can say that there's the Epilepsy Support Foundation where people, they get into a database and then we distribute the med medication. So that's the other thing that we can do. You can work on getting certain non-governmental organizations to help you get those kind of medication and distribute them to either marginalized areas or urban areas, whichever places that you are supposed to. But internationally, I know that the CRPD says that the epileptic drugs are supposed to be free. So I think you have to actually work with the authorities within your country to make sure that those things happen. All right, any other questions or any other additions that we all want to share? Uh, hi, Tashinga, and hi, everyone. Uh, this is Samuel from Malawi. I just want to agree with uh, Chikuru Pirilo. Uh, he mentioned that uh, as youth, we need to gang up, you know, uh, because most of the challenges, uh, challenges that uh, as persons with epilepsy face uh, in the African continent are a bit similar. So we need to come up with a plan. I think... Uh, map the way forward on how we can, uh, you know, uh, defeat epilepsy as youth in the African continent. Yes, definitely, definitely. I was actually thinking that since we have Stripes Week in September, oh, by the way, it's gonna be my birthday week, June <laughs> for September, I expect presents from everyone. And I say everyone. Yeah, I, I'm that type of person. <laughs> so as it was last year, I think we can all agree that Stripes it was very, very powerful. And it actually had a lot of presence. And if this year we gang up, as Simon says, as Abu Chubi says, as I say, as I once said in the group, imagine the impact we can have continentally if we can do that. If we can start organizing right now, creating our concept notes, creating our synopsis right now, creating our hashtags, creating our banners, we, know, we need to start planning early before we just do it a week before, write up cards, take pictures and all that. We need to make it something that has impact. It doesn't have to be a one day thing. It's just the same as this day on the first 14th of February. I was going with the team at the time. I thought that maybe people would have all on purple and we could have all then made TikTok videos. We could have made Instagram live shows, Facebook live shows. There are so many ways to connect wherever we are to actually to be together. We are supposed to get, we use these sources of resources. Yes, we. I always say one life is goes to one family, is goes to a generation, is goes to a nation, is goes to a world. We can change one life, that life can change a family. It can change a generation. It can change a nation and eventually the world. We don't really need to have an, an audience of 2,000 people or 3 million people on our platforms. Those small numbers that we get, we can actually change the future bit by bit slowly. It's not supposed to be something that's just supposed to be bam. No, slowly we get there, but together we do that faster. All right. So any other contributions? So can I talk? Yeah. Can I? I can yes, you can. Yeah. For me, I think to have this network of Indaba, 
we need to also be contributive to this network. We, we do know that the stigma ex ex exists in Africa. So it's about you youth qualified and who are professional to create a calendars of activities. So for calendars of activities, what I can agree with you, we need to put, for example, stigma of epilepsy in careers wise, for example, exclusion of women, for example, marriage, who, who men who have other comorbidity, other, other illness like HIV with epilepsy. So when we do a talk show, we make that talk show deep in, deep in on national radio programs and TV program. At the moment, we are just 15 people, but nothing is recorded in the national television, television of the country broadcast. But what me, I can say, the next in Daba, we need to choose which country and it passed through the program. We may put Tachinga from Zimbabwe link with Malawi, but the program is run with Mozambique together. And it call other youth who has done more experience about advocacy and the ambassadors of Africa. For example, Frederick Beucci, the youth move, the professor Ken Kenyatta from, uh, from uh, Kenya can explain also his inclusion on disability, how his country exempt his tax, et cetera. So that may awake the call and that is the way this network can connect to the youth of Africa network. And when you connect and you show that I have this chronic illness, but I'm able to be independent without to rely only on on social grant, et cetera, but I can create something and be independent in my life. So at that moment, you start to gain credibility in your society and people start to believe in you. I'm not a qualified doctor, I'm just an advocate. But so many times family call me before meet even a doctor. And one day I meet to the conflict with doctors in Rwanda, they start to call me and say, they're gonna, why they, why they trust you before us? And I said to them, if we work together, you take the patient, you, you, you remove that meat first of making them feel low, etc. They will accept to be open to you and tell you everything. For example, there is some women who can have seizures and urinate on their own clothes, but when they get in front of the doctor, they are afraid to speak about it because they say that rumor can go, it's not protected, etc. This can broke my social abilities and et cetera. So we need to be very open and we create a documentary mixed with many countries, the challenge upgrade, and we, we send them to the broadcast. And I think that is a campaign which we need to make in progress. Thank you so much. Hello. I finished, sorry. It's okay. I finish. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. If I may add. Huh? Chico, you I can don't agree speak? with everything. And uh, what I want to say, it begins with a database. We can't assume we know each other. We don't know each other. Or we don't know that we don't know each other. So I think um, if we can have a database of who we are, uh, where we are is going to be probably obvious. And then all these things can happen. I feel every, everything we've suggested to do for me, I've already done in one way or another. But where I feel we fail is we don't network because what normally happens after a meeting like this, we'll all go our separate ways. But unless we make a deliberate move to say, okay, for all those people that attended the meeting who are willing to be part of the youth in Daba group, or whatever it's going to be called. Please let's know each other, let's get contacts, let's do this. Because sometimes the EA group is just too big, but we're saying from there, who are we that are youthful, that are youth? We don't have to all be persons living with epilepsy or just advocates, but those that are saying no, would like to be part of this move to be the engine, because a lot of times when we leave things to the elderly, I'm sorry, might sound a bit rude, 
But when we leave it to the elderly, they don't have the energy that is required to do everything we're saying. But it's us who have the energy. It's us that have got ideas that are working now. There are a lot of challenges that we have when it comes to advocacy. Everybody has got the idea of what works. But the question should be, what's working now? I think with time, I could go on until another hour, but... Thank you so much, Uncle Chuku. And that is very important. I always tell people that when it comes to disability and it comes to epilepsy, I look at the mental health side. I'm studying psychology myself right now because I've seen that's my strength. I can talk to people. I can be a support system. I can. I, I am actually somebody who people can be free to. Chantel, you have seen that you have a strength in a certain area within. We are all going to be different parts. And if we join together, we become one body. And when we become one, we become very powerful. And you know, like I was when I was trying to post this, the 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 poster and everything, I didn't even know who to tag. All I knew was that there's epilepsy warriors. All I knew there was role, and I knew that there was uh, epilepsy support foundation, EP action. But as I once said in the group, let us send in our links, let us send in our profile, so that we know who we are, who's who and who's what, you know? And if we get to know that we can communicate better because you don't want the, 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 the scenario where you want to do a program and then you go talk to a volunteer in the organization when you don't know the program's office are there. So that's something that we need to do. And as youth, as Uncle Chuku said that, yes, we do need the older generation to lead us and all. Like Uncle Chuku here, he has been a great leader to us all. And I can vouch for that. He helped me one time when I was about to give up on myself. He helped me do something, like get back up and be gone with my movement. But what I want for us youth is one thing. Let us be the ones that are making the noise. I have seen how we all post stuff, we like them, and then we move on with our lives. We don't even bring back to the interface with them. And one thing, advocacy is not a competition. I repeat, advocacy is not a competition. We, it's not about who's doing better or who's doing what better than the next. It's about how can we put this forward? As we come together, we come on an idea, Tashinka comes out with an idea. I shared on the platform, we've figured out how we can integrate it into our different societies and move on. Because I understand that we have different breakdowns from where we are coming from. And we understand that, okay, fine, Ghana has a, is a place where it's filled with Muslims. How can we integrate our, 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 our advocates into doing what we wanted to do, because we understand that male, nurse, male daughters are not allowed to touch, touch female patients. And yes, Chantel was saying that she, he, she will be so afraid to talk to them. So how can we make them talk to the female nurses so that they can talk to the doctors? Those are the things that we're supposed to be coming up with. Those are the creative solutions that we are supposed to be coming up with. We don't need us to be part of the leadership to be leadership. I have always... Recently, I realized something about myself. I've always wanted to be a prefect. I've always wanted to be part of leadership. I've always wanted to wear different places. But I realized one thing in my life. Every time I enter into a place, I've always been a leader. I actually, as I'm that civilian, I'm also a leader. But I make more impact as a civilian because I am able to talk to the people that are within the problem. Because I would not be on the hierarchy where they need to be talking to me with certain protocols but I'm directly, directly included into the, into the problems, into the solutions. So as we are right now, we don't need to be in the hierarchy, we don't need to be in the leadership. Let us work from the basis that we are in right now. So- This is a good I'm point sorry, she's speaking about. Like that, yeah. I go on and go on. This is, a good point. this is a good point Tachinga speak about because I spoke about it for age. The Epilepsy Alliance Africa, even the Indaba is part of the epilepsy. Unities is what we need. And we want to see transformation and change. The synergy is not about the, the it's not about this one do well than me, etc. We need to put all together or brand cells to make change in the continent. And I think at the moment, many of them who raise voice like Tachinga, even in the media discussion, etc., they have many people who fight against them. 
but we need at least ourselves as epilepsy to facilitate it. That's why the logo of the Alliance need to be where. Even if we are working with uh, Raw Foundation, EBE, et cetera, we need to make the logo of Indaba Epilepsy Alliance as a front line. Other logo can come after, but that will show that we are trying to make a step change in the continent. And for me, I need to encourage even in Daba start to be done as we, have, we are together like that. In the next meeting, we need to invite other friends like from Zimbabwe, from your country, et cetera, Rwanda, et cetera. So we can see more people connect to it and listening to it. And it will be very, very brilliant. And I think this Tachinga is saying, Hello. this is a leadership, selfless, and you get lift up. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yes, Hello, uh, Tashinga, and, uh, and hi, everyone. Uh, I don't know, Tashinga, were you taking uh, notes? Yes, I was. Yeah. Oh, OK, OK. Uh, oh, so I think uh, it's past our, the time we, we scheduled to have this for an hour and 30 minutes, so it's past that. So I would love okay. if we can end the meeting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Can we all? Um, but normally we need to take videos. a picture and. Yes, yes. We, happy we need to start our videos. Everyone, thank you so much. We need to start our video so that we can take a picture. Okay, we can put the video. No problem. Samo, can you please take the photo because I'm using my phone. <laughs> Uh, I'm also using my phone, so okay, I'll try. Um, okay, let me use my laptop. Okay. Um. Okay, so I'm not taking the photo. Okay, done. Ah, perfect, perfect. So, uh, I would just like to thank everyone who presented today for their wonderful presentations. Uh, as a person with epilepsy myself, I know it takes great courage, you know, to stand in front of your, uh, you know, your peers and talk about uh, epilepsy and talk about, you know, um, our life experiences with epilepsy. Yeah, so it's very commendable for all of you who have uh, participated today. Thank you very much. Thank you too. Bye. Thank you so much. I see that we all have a lot to Thank say. You. So we are going to create a group and Very we then say you, everything man. that we want to say. Okay. So Thank I you. think this will end our meeting today. Um, Thank you so much for everything. I think let me leave my number on the chat so that people can contact and